This is Storytelling with Puppets. And this time, the story is called Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? by Bill Martin Jr. and Eric Carle. And the way I like to tell this story with puppets, I actually do it as a follow-up. What that means is, during a story time or a class visit or whatever, I'll take the book, the actual book, and read the book from start to finish to the kids. And then, with a follow-up, you put down the book, and then you retell the story, um, often not exactly in the same way, uh, but you retell a version of it with puppets. So in this case, I'd read the story, um, show all the pictures, and then say something like, oh, you know, that was a great story, but hey, guess what? You know what? I've got a brown bear. I've got a brown bear on my own. I wonder, I wonder what he will see if he looks in this puppet bag. Let's see how it goes. <clears throat> And the kids, having just read that book, and usually they join in with, with, the, with the words in that, they'll probably join in at this point. Brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? Oh, I see a... I see a... Gray mouse looking at me. Gray mouse, gray mouse, what do you see? I see a... Before we continue there, um, just a few words about that beginning. So it's, it's, um, it's the brown bear coming out. And as a storyteller, I sort of use my normal voice for the brown bear, brown bear, what do you see part. And then I use a different voice, nothing too distinctive, but just something to change my voice so the kids know this is a character talking now and not, and not me. So he'll say, I see a... And it, it doesn't have to be an exceptional voice, um, just something a little bit different. They don't have a lot to say, it's just one line. And I see a, while he's saying that, I'm reaching in here trying to get that mouse puppet on my hand. Um, if it takes a little bit longer for me to do that, that's okay. A little hesitation while Brown Bear is, is looking in there and the kids are wondering what's going to pop out is good. And when they pop out this, when, when mouse pops out, the kids may well, ideally, they'll say, I see a, so give them a little room when Brown Bear says that. I see a, instead of, I see a gray mouse. I see a, and the kids might speak out. A gray mouse, or sometimes they'll just say a mouse. A gray mouse looking at me. The other thing I like to do is sort of accent that looking at me part, where they sort of look at each other like that. I see a gray mouse looking at me. That sort of freezes the moment and transitions to the next one. And I just put Bear down somewhere where I can grab him again. Um, I may put him back in the bag, but I prefer to usually put him in front of, in front of me and behind the bag. I can reach him easily, but he's out of sight of the kids because he'll need to come back later. So then it's, gray mouse, gray mouse, what do you see? I see a, I see a. And at this point, it's hard, kids probably aren't gonna say black and white zebra, especially younger kids, which is who I usually do this, this story with. So this is where I'll usually prompt them a little bit. I see a, and then I break out and say, what is, what kind of animal is that? That's the easiest thing for them. And they'll say zebra. And then I'll say, what colors? Black and white. And then go back to mouse. I see a black and white zebra looking at me. Just like that. And the fun part about this is, you know, gray mouse is one thing. Um, the, the part of the, the genius of this book, the animals are so recognizable. The colors are very clear and easy to, easy to identify. So when you've done a real simple version, now you're playing around with it a little bit. So you can use just animals like gray mouse that are straightforward, but I do like to mix it up a little bit. So pull out an animal with two colors, like zebra, and challenge the kids to kind of expand on that very simple pattern they've already learned. So, or you can, you can go in a different direction too. Zebra, zebra, what do you see? Uh, I see a green octopus looking at me. So an octopus is an animal that not all kids know. So instead of just a you know, sort of bear, yellow duck and all, they're seeing something unusual. And it kind of um, uh, you know, can be a surprise or also sort of a, a vocabulary builder for them. Um, also, it's a chance if you have kind of unusual puppets that you don't get to use in very many stories, because there aren't that many great octopus stories, here's a chance. Um, green octopus, green octopus, what do you see? And um, so here I'm going to mix it up again, um, a little, make it a little more complicated. Oh, I see a... Here, I'm having trouble getting this puppet on, so I'm going to have Octopus help me out a little bit. I see a... Oh, very unusual. I'm not sure you guys will know what that is. 
I see a... What is that? And they'll say, Toucan, maybe. Oh, look at those colors. I see a, a red and green and orange and yellow and black. And I always leave out the, the blue eye there because the kids will spot it. Wait, there's blue, there's blue. Oh yes, you're right, there's blue. A blue. I see a red and orange and green and yellow and black and blue toucan looking at me. So those are just some of the variations you can do with a story. And depending on your audience and what you feel like doing, you can do you know four puppets, you can do eight puppets, or, or whatever's in between. But if I were to stop there, then I'd follow sort of the pattern of the book, um, the closing of the book. Toucan, toucan, what do you see? I see, and I'll usually have them look in the bag and act like there's nothing there. Oh, nothing there. Oh, oh, I see Stephen looking at me, or the librarian, or the teacher, or whatever. And then it's, as in the book, Stephen, Stephen, what do you see? I see children looking at me. And then I will say, children, children, what do you see? And I'll prompt them a little bit, um, and now we're going to see all of, all of the puppets, see if you can identify them. What do you see? You see a... And then now I'm grabbing the puppets in order of the way, if I can, in order of the way I showed them, because that really, that's part of the, the real strong pattern of the book. A brown bear and a gray mouse. And, you know, this, this repetition is great because the kids who were a little, falling a little behind with a black and white zebra get a chance to, to reinforce what they learned, or maybe they didn't know this octopus, but now they're, they're remembering green octopus and another test to see if they can do all the colors of the toucan. And a red and orange and green and yellow and blue and black toucan looking at us. And then I usually end it with, uh, in the book it's, that's what we see, but I usually end it with, and that's what you see. So there's one way to tell brown bear, brown bear. Now when you do it as a follow-up like this, a couple of neat things happen. One is, um, as I mentioned, you're taking the very simple pattern of the book, simple details of the book, using the same pattern and making the details a little more challenging for the kids. So sort of building on that earlier knowledge, which is very powerful, good way to learn. Um, you're also showing parents and caregivers in the audience a story with puppets that's pretty fun, um, but it's also really easy to learn and easy to do. They can do this story at home, probably. They've got a bag and they've got some animals, whether it's puppets or stuffed animals or hard plastic animals. So they can replicate this. And, it, and I always try to make a point of, of, you know, kind of hinting or telling them about that. Try this at home with what you have. Because um, a lot of the stories that we do in story time with puppets are pretty hard for, for others to replicate if they don't use puppets a lot or don't have them. But this is one they can do very easily. And, um, and when you also mention the benefits of vocabulary and narrative skills as, as the kids play with patterns and, and transfer that uh, ability to share that in this way to parents or caregivers, um, really good early literacy building. So that is one way to tell um, brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? First as a story and then with puppets.